Welcome to a new video from the Building CI CD Pipelines with Jenkins course brought to you by CoreLogix. My name is Valentin Despa, and in this series, you will learn how to build, test, and deploy a Java application to AWS using Jenkins Pipelines. In case you have missed any of the previous videos, make sure that you check the video description for the full playlist. In this video, you will learn how to automatically trigger the execution of a Jenkins Pipeline without any manual intervention. As you have noticed so far, we have been triggering this pipeline manually. But this is starting to get annoying and especially can be very dangerous because we can start make changes, push them to the repository, but get absolutely no feedback if our pipeline is still working, if our code is still working. And especially if there are multiple developers working on the same project, sooner or later it will break someone's code and the entire team will not be able to work on the project. So having this pipeline run with every change or on a constant basis is very important to ensure that we actually get value from our continuous integration pipeline. Fortunately, Jenkins has a way to do this. Actually, there are multiple ways on how to do this. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to configure a pipeline to run automatically. Let's go ahead and configure the job. This configuration can be found inside this tab called Build Triggers. Now, there are two easy ways to get started with this. One of them is to build the project periodically. And this is particularly useful, especially for projects where you're not making changes that often, which are maybe in a maintenance mode, or maybe you're not using them so much. Maybe you just want to combine, at least want to ensure that they run at least once a night. So you can click here this build periodically and you can define here a schedule. The schedule will look pretty similar to this other option that I wanted to show you, which is polling. So polling git is simply Jenkins going to our repository and asking, hey, are there any changes? No. Hey, are there any changes? No. Hey, are there any changes? Yes. Oh, great. There are changes. Let's start the pipeline. So this is where we can define a schedule. And if you click this help button here, we can get an idea on how to configure this. Now, regardless if you are familiar with this syntax or not, I'm not gonna go so much into it, but the documentation itself is quite good. It can help you get started with the most common scenarios. I'm just gonna copy this instruction here like every 15 minutes and I paste it here as a schedule. And will actually, in order to properly detect what will happen, it will tell you when it would have last run and when it is scheduled to run the next time so that you have an idea if the command that you're writing here works properly. For example, if I were to change this to a five, then you'll be able to see that if I click away from the field itself, this will run every five minutes. This is up to you how you want to configure it. Just want to show you how this configuration looks like. In case you're familiar with the syntax, this is the cron syntax allows you to configure how often to run it. I'm gonna save it here. Go back to the configure, just to review again what we have done. Go to build triggers, and this is how it looked like. This poll SCM will be checked, and this is the schedule that we have used. So we just have to wait a few minutes, and then in the meantime, actually make a small change so that we can see the pipeline running. As you can notice right now, Pipeline started running on its own without me triggering it automatically. So it was checking against the repository to see if there are any changes there. And at one point it detected changes and decided to start the pipeline. We can notice that by looking inside the console. So if you go to the job number eight, we'll see here that it says here started by an SCM change. So this is quite important because it says here it has been polling and then it noticed that there's a difference and this is how this pipeline was started. So it's important to understand how a specific job started running. In this case, the previous job that was still triggered manually was started by me, by the admin user. So this has been a job that was manually started. While checking the repository to see if there are any changes every five minutes, is probably not the most ideal situation. It's still better than having us to manually trigger the job. So at least for now, this will be just enough to get us started 
and to eliminate this manual intervention that we had before. 